Welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, all of our staff, and all of the people who are helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so glad that you are here. It is the fourth Sunday of Advent where we're celebrating peace and the stories of Mary. We have our Advent wreath lighting that will be coming up, so if you're gonna participate with us in that, get your Advent wreath uh, ready. And if you don't have one of those, get a candle ready so you can light a candle with us. And of course, all of the wonderful songs and prayers and things that we're doing together in worship. It's a great day to be in worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. If uh, this is your first time to be worshiping with us, we are so pleased that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship. I want to encourage you to use your contact form that is pinned right in the comment section, and I would love everyone to use that today. There's a place there for you to put your contact information so we can get in contact with you, but there's also a place there for prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. Um, I just would love for you to fill out that contact form so that we can connect with you, that we can be a part of your life of faith and grow growth in service and love of Jesus Christ. So please use that contact form today. Now, when we meet together for online worship in this way, we covenant and promise together to participate and to be a blessing. That means that we're gonna to promise to participate. This isn't just a video of a random thing that you found on the internet, this is worship together. So go ahead when we sing, stand up and sing. When we're praying, pray. When it's time to light candles, light candles, fully engage with what it is that we're doing together today in worship. And then we promise to be a blessing. That means that in our comment section, everything we say, the way we listen to one another and respond, all of that is a blessing. The way that we are with the people in our households, the way we're with our community at large, that everything we do together is a blessing to everyone participating and to everyone into the world. We also, when we gather together, share the love and peace of Jesus Christ. We do that by saying, peace be with you and responding, and also with you. You can do that in the comment section with folks. You can do that with people in your household. You can do that with me. Peace be with you and also with you. And we're gonna be led in this by our Zephyr Sunday School class. Peace be with you. Good morning. This is Sue Sellers with the Zooming Zephyr Sunday School class. We have classmates joining us today by phone and by video from around Illinois and even in Florida. May peace be with you. And with you. I'm Joanne McDonald from Florida and I want peace to be with you. Peace be with you. This is Richard joining you from Springfield. Peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Sid Young. Peace be with you. And also with you. And I'm Kay Watt, the wife of the Sunday school teacher, John Watt, sitting right here. And peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Keith Schnapp. I'm a member of the uh, great Springfield Zephyr class here at Douglas Avenue. And I live in Springfield. And peace be with all of you.
Hi, we're the Dione family. I'm Curtis. And I'm Justine. And these are our two children, Aaron and Meredith. We invite you to have your Advent wreath candles ready and join us in lighting the four candles around the outside. Um, it is the fourth Sunday of Advent. During the season of Advent, we get ready. We get ready for the celebration of Jesus' birth at Christmas. And we get ready for Jesus to come again into our world to make all things new. We live on the edge every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Very often we forget to look around and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity. God with us right now. In the Gospel of Luke, it tells us that God's favor came to an ordinary girl. A girl like you, or your daughter, like the girl down the street, or your grandchild. The messenger of God came and greeted Mary and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. Even when we forget to pay attention, God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that passes all understanding. We light these four candles as a sign of hope, a sign of love, a sign of joy, and a sign of peace. Please light your candles too. Let these lights help us see Jesus, our hope for the world, the way of love, the joy of beauty, and the peace of God's nearness to us all. Please pray with me. O oh God of peace, help us feel your powerful presence near us as close as our next breath. Be born among us that all the world may be made new. Amen. Amen. Please join with Karis and me in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It is time for small talk. So I want to encourage all of the children who are watching to get in really close to your device and your screen so that you can see and hear everything that goes on. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our children and youth director, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. You don't want to miss a moment of small talk. Let's get ready. Good morning. This is so exciting. We are so close to Christmas. Laud, are you excited? Yeah, I know. So we have with us here today are, we have two nativity sets here. One's a little bit more grown up and then we have our younger nativity set and they're so pretty. And we talk all of the time about how beautiful and how wonderful this would have been. And it was, but we've made it really pretty. And when we stop and we think about it, Jesus being born in a stable, right? And when we think about what stables are like, 
We've made these stables look really pretty. It probably wasn't. And not only was it not real pretty, the other thing stables are, are sometimes kind of stinky. Yeah, very stinky lot. Not that you'd ever do anything like that in a stable though, would you? No, you're a very civilized lamb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we think about it being stinky, what makes a stable stinky? Mm-hmm. Poop. Poop made that stable probably really stinky from the animals. They can't help it, that's their home. And we have to remember that that's where Jesus was born. And probably a not very clean, not pretty, not smells like Christmas beautiful stable. So to help us rem remind us of that, we're going to make our nativity scenes look a little bit more authentic. Now, you could ask your moms and dads if you could do this with your nativity set. Be prepared. They may say no. And that's okay. So, I have here some chocolate chips. You could also have maybe some raisinettes. Lambs don't eat chocolate. But, you know, just, just scatter those out about your nativity set. Yep, scatter those all about. That way, it'll help you remember how special Jesus really was and how he really came into this world. So think about that in the middle of all of our excitement this week. Bye guys, have a great week. See you later. Hi, I'm Leah Philbrick and I am in the youth group. Our first reading from the Bible is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our readings. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much too perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be, he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Hi, my name is Emily LaFrenz. I'm a member at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We continue reading from the first chapter of Luke, verses 46 through 55, with Mary's songs of praise, the Magnificat. And Mary sang out, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown me strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. 
This is a video of the praise band performing I Will Surrender. This is an original song written by Tom Philbrick. The Douglas Avenue community really enjoys this song each year. listening to Christmas music in earnest. We're particular fans of throwback Motown and soul and swing Christmas albums, you know, like the Jackson 5 and the Supremes and Ella Fitzgerald. We were putting together our family Christmas Spotify playlist, and of course we were debating the merits of our favorite Christmas songs. My husband put in a good word for Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. My daughter, Joy, she favors the Beach Boys, Little St. Nick. My daughter, Karis, she loves Run Run Rudolph by Chuck Berry. And then I got into the mix and threw in Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. The list is continuing to expand. The debate is going on, as you can well imagine. You know, Christmas musical tastes, they vary so widely from person to person and family tradition to family tradition. And I think with our limited celebrations this year, with people needing to stay home due to COVID-19, with all of the stresses and the griefs and things just not as maybe we're used to them being in this season, I think that you should enjoy whatever Christmas music helps you enjoy this time, that brings you joy and hope and peace and love. Listen to all of it. We need so much more of that happiness and joy and connection right now. And Christmas music is often a wonderful way to bring that into reality. I must confess, however, that sometimes it can be difficult for me to listen to some Christmas music. 
I spent a long time reading and studying the Bible, and some Christmas songs play so fast and loose with the Bible story of Christmas that I really just can't enjoy them at all. Sometimes I can't stop thinking in my head, no, that's not what the Bible says about the story. And it's not just in popular music, but in some of our most beloved Christmas carols too. It's the curse of the Bible nerd at Christmas. Now, I am about to name a Christmas song that I really don't enjoy. And I'm absolutely sure that it is one person here right now who's gonna go, wait a minute, I love that Christmas song. It's my favorite. So I want you and everyone to hear this. Listen to what makes you happy. Look at me. Listen to the Christmas music that helps make you happy and gives you joy and helps connect you. If the song helps you connect with God and with others, then listen to it on continuous repeat if you want. God uses all kinds of things to help us experience joy. You do you. Okay? Okay. This year, I find that I cannot listen to the song, Mary, Did You Know, without yelling back at it. I seem to have no problems with songs about talking snowmen or about magical sleighs pulled by glowing reindeer. Oh, but Mary, did you know? It sets me right off. It's a sweet song with a lovely chorus that's easy to learn and a wonderful hook, and a lot of people love it. I can see why. It uses the image of Mary holding the baby Jesus as she contemplates his future. The imagined narrator of the song repeatedly asks, Mary, did you know about Jesus' miracles, about Jesus' divinity? Did you know about Jesus' mission as deliverer and savior and redeemer and his incarnation? And I have to confess, every time he says, Mary, did you know? I find myself yelling back, yes, yes, she knew. She knew all of it. It's right there in the Bible story. She knew it all. She lived it in her body, in her yes, in her entire life. She knew it. A couple of our weekly small groups have been reading together Amy Jill Levine's Light of the World, which is a really great Bible study of the scripture passages of Advent and Christmas. In the second chapter that's entitled, The Promise of Possibility, we took a deep dive into Luke chapter one, studying the Bible passages that were read for us today. Mary is really the central character in the gospel of Luke's telling of Jesus's birth story. In her, we are to hear echoes of the songs of Miriam and Deborah and Hannah from our Old Testament. These are the prophet voices of the mothers of Mary's Jewish faith. And theirs are some of the oldest and most important stories of our Hebrew scriptures. In the passage that Leah shared with us this morning, we hear of the Annunciation to Mary. In Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, the angel Gabriel shows up to Mary to make sure that she understands explicitly what is happening to her. The angel Gabriel tells Mary that her child will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. Mary accepts this declaration wholeheartedly, has some conversation with the angel Gabriel about how and the powerful work of the Holy Spirit, and then gives her consent to become Jesus' mother. Mary says, here I am, your servant, yes. In the following verses, we hear how Mary, now pregnant, hustles off to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who the angel Gabriel has said is the sign to confirm what has been told her. You see, Elizabeth is also miraculously pregnant in her sixth month with the child who will grow to be John the Baptizer. 
feeling John leap in her womb upon Mary's entrance into her home, Elizabeth offers a blessing of thanks and praise for Mary's faithfulness. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth affirms what the angel Gabriel has proclaimed. Then, in response, Mary offers her song of praise, which has become called the Magnificat for the first word of the song in its Latin translation. Like other women's songs from the Bible, Mary's song tells the core of the mission of Jesus and provides a prophetic and interpretive lens through which we can see Jesus' life and work. Before Jesus is ever born, Mary sees and Mary knows. The center of Mary's song can be found in verse 51. The Lord has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Did Mary know? Yes, Mary knew. She knew it all. She knew it better, better than most of us, even with our advantages to access to the full teachings and life of Jesus. She knew that Jesus was good news to the poor, that Jesus would lift up the lowest, heal the broken hungry hearted, and feed the hungry that Jesus would give away the power of God's strong arms to the weakest, the outcast, the excluded, and the oppressed. She knew that Jesus was the fulfillment of God's powerful love and deliverance as witnessed and experienced throughout the generations of her Jewish faith, that the promise of God was happening in the present moment and was extending beyond throughout all generations. She knew it all, even the hard part that we still struggle with, that God's love and God's kingdom are for everyone, not just the rich, the powerful, the high up, the righteous, but especially for the lowly, the immigrant, the struggling, the poor, those who are outcast and downcast. Mary knew. She knew it all. This Christmas, my prayer is that you will know what surely Mary knew. Everyone is beloved of God, including you. All people, no matter their social status, political power, or economic influence, are beloved of God, including you. All systems of oppression Alienation, exclusion, empire, dominance, deceit, dehumanization, bias, and terror will fail before the might of the God of justice, the mighty one of the Magnificat, the God of Mary. Sometimes in the midst of our celebrations of the birth of a child and Mary's love, it can be easy to forget the revolutionary power of the incarnation. Jesus isn't just a baby. He is Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. Even when we get distracted or lose sight or forget, Mary doesn't. Mary remembers. She knew. She knew it all. And she invites us to know it too. Amen. Good morning. I'm Janet Schmidt, the organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join me in singing, He Came Down.
Each week during the season of Advent and Christmas, we are getting to share with someone in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family a special Christmas decoration or ornament that brings them peace or hope or joy or love. Today, that special witness is brought to us by Ellen Dixon. Hi, I'm Ellen Dixon, and we were talking about ornaments or ways that we celebrated Christmas. On my shoulders, you'll find a lamb and a donkey, and these are from the National Shrine of Our Lady of Snows down by Belleville, Illinois. And they have a way of lights. It's a beautiful all white lights and tells the whole nativity story. I looked it up and it's on from November 20th through December 31st, if you're wanting to go. They have carriage rides and they have a lot of different things that happen there. It's great family time. But this was a way that uh, Jonathan and I, my deceased husband, uh, went and got ready for Christmas. We had to go there because it's all about Christmas. It's nothing about anything other than the Bible. And it tells the whole nativity story. So it got a real good, strong concentration of how that whole story happened. At the end of all that is a beautiful uh, grotto with life-size figures of Mary and Joseph. And there's other life-size statues along the road too. So which is just an inspiration to us. So what I did in the past years was because we got one of these animals at the end, it's a fundraiser. And uh, I know Laud will enjoy the lamb. So I wanted to make sure that Laud got to see our lamb. And at the end of the first fundraising, they sell these stuffed animals. And each year it's something different. I found out this year it's gonna be a fox. And so I got, we got two of them and that's how I decorated our Christmas tree. I put all of these animals on the branches looking out. And for many years as a kid like that, I liked that. It was easy decorating. It was fun and lots of good memories. I am finished with the video. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup and I am the associate pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is now the time that we go to God in prayer. And I continue to encourage you to share your prayer request. You can do that on the contact form or include that in the comments. And the pastors as well as the prayer team and the church family would like to pray with you if that is your wish. And now I ask you to please bow your heads as we come together and join our hearts with the heart of God. Father, we pray that you will turn our hearts toward you as Christmas approaches. In these next five days, help us not to get caught up in the details of the season and miss the chance to celebrate the gifts of peace and hope and love and joy that you sent to us on that very first Christmas. Even in the midst of the pandemic, remind us of your presence and help us to focus on what matters most, loving you, loving others, and doing our part to promote safety and justice and health in this world. We are so grateful, O oh God, for the good news of the vaccine. We continue to ask you, God, to be with those that are sick with COVID or any illness. Be with those, O oh God, that are depressed, anxious, grieving, or lonely. Please surround and protect the caregivers and all essential workers in our community and the world. We call out to you to protect our children during these days. May their little hearts open as they await the coming of Christmas. May we all do our part to teach and lead and show them the true meaning of this season as they find joy in the anticipation of gifts and holiday traditions. For those children without church or without homes, may they learn about you through the love and goodness from us and those around them. For our country, O oh God, and our world, how we need you. Racism and political division persist. May your spirit reign over each of us so we may so love and be participants in justice. As we move into this Christmas week, be with this church, the leaders and the staff. Help us to proclaim your good news in a way that changes hearts and brings more people into your kingdom. Now together we will pray that prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We know that generosity is a way that we express hope and love and joy and peace. And your generous financial giving has certainly done that here with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you for the way that you continue to give those generous financial gifts that make all of the ministries with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church a possibility and a reality. We encourage you to continue in that giving. You can do that by using our online giving portal, the a link to that is pinned right in the comment section. You can set up automatic payments with your financial institution or with our financial institution. Contact us in the church office if you'd like some assistance with that. And of course, you can mail in your checks to Douglas Avenue as well. We have multiple special offerings that are going on right now. A special offering to support our staff at Christmas, special Christmas mission giving that is going on right now. You can access all of that through the online giving portal and also by contacting the church office. I do want to make a couple of special announcements about our online worship services that are coming up this week. We'll be having our longest night service on Monday, December 21st at 7 p.m. On Christmas Eve, our family service is at 2 p.m. Our family Christmas concert begins at 4.45 p.m., followed by our Christmas Eve lessons and carols at 5.15 p.m., and then Christmas Eve communion at 9 p.m. All of those worship experiences are online. You access for those premieres right here on Facebook and will be available on demand after those premieres through Facebook and also through our webpage. We hope that you will join with us for Christmas worship in celebrating the birth and the love of Jesus Christ in this special season. Please do, if you're able to, have a candle with you for those services, bells with you for those services. If it's online communion, bring your own bread and beverage to that, and let's celebrate Christmas as only we can in worship together. And now, as we have been doing for many weeks, we will have a mission moment that will be celebrating the missions that we're supporting with our Christmas mission offering. We're supporting the Santa Express with Chaddock Children's Home and also Helping Hands Homeless Services here in Springfield. And we're gonna hear about that right now with Becca Johnson. Hi, I'm Rebecca Johnson, and I am the co-chair of the Missions Committee here at DAUMC. Last week, you learned about Chaddock, which half of our missions Christmas letter will be going to. This week, I am here to tell you about Helping Hands of Springfield, which serves our unhoused neighbors here in Springfield. And this is where the other half of that Christmas offering will go. Helping Hands serves our unhoused neighbors in many ways, providing services such as emergency shelter and permanent supported housing. They work to empower individuals by providing case management, advocacy, mental health services, resource referrals, and much more. So we wanted to invite you to join us in supporting them as you're able. We thank you so much, and please take care. Hi, I'm Becca Philbrick, and I'm the Director of Music Ministries. Please join me in singing Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Thank you so much for joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for this time of worship today. We pray that this worship has been meaningful, uplifting, powerful for you, that you have found healing and hope, and that you will join with us again for online worship. Of course, there's online worship this special week, beginning on Monday with Longest Night, continuing on Christmas Eve with all of those opportunities for online worship. You can see all of those on our webpage, on our Facebook page. Connect with us. Let us worship with you and celebrate Christmas with you in these powerful ways. I encourage you again to use your contact form if you have not done so. And remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love you and of course, we miss not getting to be in the same room with you, getting to see each other face to face. But again, we are so grateful that we have this time, these ways, this technology that we can connect and worship with one another, especially during this season. And now as you go from this place into your day, Go knowing that the God of Mary, the God of justice, the God of infinite love and mercy loves you completely and entirely. That Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, is with you. And that the Holy Spirit speaks to you, speaks to me, speaks to us. Those words of immeasurable joy this Christmas and always. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.